Hello, everyone, and welcome to our special customer live stream event, the ultimate guide to creating store locators that attract and convert customers. I'll invite uh, my hosts in in a moment to uh, come and present this with me. But uh, as you can see below, these are uh, your expert presenters for today. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, Ihab Aboud, who is our senior value engineer. And uh, Ihab is also um, an expert on all things uh, locator, but also in um, SEO, local search, all these types of things. So he's going to be a fountain of knowledge for you all today. We also have Cliff Shapiro, who is our senior product manager, and he lives and breathes locator. It's what he um strives for is to uh first of all manage the uber all store locator um but also he loves to keep up with all of the um you know latest uh, doings in the locator scene and then there's myself uh brad fagan um senior product marketer um and i will be uh, your moderator for today so uh, let's get into it first of all I uh, just want to inform you about what you're going to learn today. So uh, we will take you through some general housekeeping, but in terms of the rundown of what you'll learn today, uh, we'll go through the value of store locators based on our own customer data. Um, we'll, we'll run a poll. Uh, so uh, with a, a question there um, to get the engagement flowing, uh, we'll also um, then hand over to Ehab when he's going to talk about the, the consumer uh, journey uh, in 2023. Um, and then also Cliff and Ehab will, will both uh, present the uh, good locator and bad store locators um, uh, and basically guide you through what you need uh, to create a successful one. And then we'll end with a live Q&A session as well. Cool. Now for the housekeeping. So you are going to get a copy of the webinar uh, recording sent to you. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube currently, you can turn on auto-generated uh, subs within YouTube. So if you're one of our, you know, French or German speakers, um, you know, you can turn on those subs. And if you want to also have some subs to help you along in English, you can do that too. Now, also, um, if you have any questions for the webinar, please put them in. Um, the question section of the panel, we'll be answering them uh, as we go. We want to keep this as interactive as possible. So anytime you have a question about what any of our presenters are saying, just put that in uh, the question section of the panel. And then lastly, um, we're going to have a survey at the end of this whole thing uh, because we want to know exactly uh, what kind of value that you got from it. So, you know, please stay, stick around uh, to answer some questions for us so we can make this um, a better experience for you in the long run. Uh, okay, so without further ado, let's go. Um, so this is the part where I just really want to stop and um, think about and, and speak to Ehab a little bit about what a store locator is. The reason why I want to do that is because there are uh, probably some people um, you know, watching this that have um, either no idea what one is, um, you know, store locator and local pages on a website, um, or even if you do know what they are, maybe you don't know what they should be at their best. And so I just wanna invite our um, expert in here, Ehab, just to talk about your definition of what a, you know, a store locator in its ideal state um, is defined as being. Yeah, sure. So to me, a store locator is a rich, useful, easy to use uh, map solution, sometimes just a widget. Um, and it should be able to lead you to a single local page for every Google listing, for every brick and mortar location you might have. Um, and so those local pages should ultimately be a more detailed version of digital shop front which is your google business profile listing that relationship should exist as sort of a one-to-one -one. and the locator should allow you to get there really really easy or in this case your customers yeah fabulous thanks for that um yeah so this slide really um all i wanted to say with this slide here is essentially that um you know online search is an ecosystem local search itself is also an equals ecosystem with high intent right so when your customer journey begins 
your customers are searching for you or maybe not, depending on whether it's a branded or an unbranded search. There, if it's obviously um, an unbranded search, you give them the opportunity to find you in more places. If it's a branded search, you give them the opportunity to engage with you in different places, right? On your Google business profiles or on your uh, local website pages. And so this is just an, um, uh, uh, an overview and an insight into the fact that having a store locator and having local pages on your website helps that customer find more information, helps them locate you, helps them connect with you, and then ultimately helps them to decide how they want to interact with you going forward. This is going to be important later for the data I share with you. So let's uh, move on and talk a little bit about um, the uh, local search ranking factors. This is always a big study um, that, that goes on, and I would like to talk about a little bit about um, the importance of on-page signals. And as you see there, it's in a, it's in a purple box uh, in front of you. Um, and it's the one that's actually grown in importance um, this year. And so that's why uh, a big part of why we're actually having this um, you know, conversation today is because of the fact that it's really important, I think, for our customers to know and understand that value and how um, really on-page signals have grown in importance. And again, I'd just like to throw to Ehab just to talk a little bit about this. Uh, can you just come in here, mate? Yes, yeah, certainly. I think it kind of goes back to one of the things I was one of the things I was mentioning earlier about you know on-page signals. Really, Google are trying to give the most relevant information as possible um, to the users, and they know that what's on page on the local pages adds to that so much. Again, basically being an extension to the digital shop front, the Google business profile. So the more rich information you have the more useful it is for the customers, the more likely they are to make, place an order, turn up to your location, transact, uh, book a meeting, whatever it might be, even if it's B2B as well. Um, ultimately, it, it, it can um, result in a, hopefully a positive return on investment, really. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that, Ehab. So really, um, what I want to get uh, from that is that you know after understanding this this local search ranking factor study we went and did our own research and actually this is from a previous study but this is mostly on um, understanding uh, our own customers and how they've um, you know uh, how it's impacted them to have a store locator on top of listings and reviews and what we found is that the the customers that have uh, say listings and reviews plus a locator have 42% uh, more impressions and also 39% more clicks. And that's just one uh, data point that we have uh, to point out. Now, another important thing to, to note is something that I already said a little bit earlier was the high intent of the customer that is actually going to your local website pages. Because um, as you can see uh, to the right there, you've got the average uh, conversion rate, and by conversion rate, I just mean like clicks, you know, engagements. Uh, the average um, uh, conversion rate of a Google business profile is around 1.9%. The average of uh, your branded website is around 2.9%. And then uh, the average local website pages conversion rate is around 6.4%. So having these local pages um, with, you know, a high level of customization, a lot more information, um, also having owned pages rather than your Google business profiles that, you know, obviously they're not owned pages. Your pages on your website are going to help you send customers and not get distracted by all the other options that are on, you know, um, you know the maps or obviously in Google business profiles, they can kind of obviously easily choose to look and find another business or another option. But when they're on your local website pages, they're going to be able to choose you more easily than, you know, uh, uh, or not even choose you, but obviously that's the option, right? You're giving them an option. You're putting calls to action on your pages and you're helping them make a decision for yourself. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to uh, move on very soon to, to Ehab and he's going to start go freewheeling and, and, and guide you through a customer journey without a deck. So that's going to be good. But the last thing I wanted to show you is the apples to apples comparison of six months before um, having a locator versus six months after. And this is again, Uber all customer data, which actually shows that um, Google Maps impressions increased by almost 50% um, 
from each of those customers on average in the six months before they actually had allocated to the six months after. That's pretty huge increase of actual, um, you know, maps impressions. And then 32.5% um, increase in bookings on Google. And this is kind of as well, like there's 42% increase on, um, you know, clicks on driving directions as well. So a lot of um, around about that same amount in terms of actions on Google business profiles as well. It's big in terms of making sure that just like what that local ranking factor survey showed, um, very true that it has an impact on not only your visibility for your Google business profiles, but also the engagements on that as well. All righty. So here, um, before I transition, uh, there is um, a few typical pain points that we find from um, customers around, um, uh, you know, not having a strong local presence, right? So, uh, and that these are the ones that really align with having a strong uh, store locator and local pages. And um, first of all, customers can't find you. Obviously, that's a big one. Uh, customers aren't engaging with you. Um, you have limited oversight of your customer journey, uh, inconsistent brand and image online. It takes too long to manage owned, uh, owned online info and pages. And then lastly, lack of control over your local pages. All of this speaks to one massive holistic um, issue, which is that you have a lack of control, right? And so having locator and local pages helps you to take back that control and helps you funnel that customer journey um, and by providing them with more place, more options. And then once they get on these play, uh, pages, then they have conversion actions that they can do, which is really the ultimate goal is to convert your customers. Okay, fabulous. And that's it. So I'm going to stop uh, sharing now. And while I do that, um, we're gonna launch a little poll for everyone to engage with before handing it over to Ehab. And so here's a poll for everyone. And don't worry if you can't see our faces anymore, I will be back momentarily. That's just what happens when the poll launches. So once you've answered this, please go ahead and answer it now. Um, once you finish answering this, then we will be presently right back in front of you and we will continue on uh, with this conversation. So yes, please uh, um, answer this now. What do you think is the most impactful initiative for the customer journey when trying to convert customers? Do you think it's gonna be um, your focus on reviews, um, Google business profiles or local website pages? Uh, yeah, please go ahead and answer now. All right, so the poll seems to be done. So we're gonna show you the results now. Fabulous, okay, reviews, yeah. Really popular one. So obviously there's no wrong answer here um, because they're all impactful in different ways. But um, Ehab, do you just wanna um, you know, speak to these results? And then obviously you're gonna be taking over sharing of the screen as well. Yes, certainly. In terms of the customer journey, in terms of building trust, uh, reviews certainly is the top place there. I, I, I can definitely agree with that. What I do see though is that there are sometimes some almost subconscious signals that you're making if you're if there's a bare bones profile but it happens to have a hundred five star reviews i'm going to start to think okay are those some dated reviews is there something wrong with that profile how do i get there what if i'm taking a long road trip and i want to quickly stop for some sushi on the way or something um it might be rated quite highly but how could i find it in the dark you know that's the kind of thing that i'd be thinking of um and a local website page is one of those things that really helps you understand a little bit more about a business so you dig a little bit deeper um once you you're a little bit confused and you don't know where this location is for example maybe there's an indicator it's under a certain building or next to a landmark you might be able to find that out on a local page um so yeah like brad said there's no right or wrong answers but um i just wanted to sort of showcase some of the other reasons why the others are so so important mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um and anything on there that you'd like to call out as well cliff I think you have did a great job um, <laughs> explaining, you know, the important reviews, but also, um, you know, the importance of, of, of the pages as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I was saying before as well, um, you know, this whole thing is an ecosystem. So really, it's a bit of a trick question. Um, you know, you have reviews um, being 
kind of uh, you know uh, something that you can actually um, put into uh, you know obviously they're important to your Google business profiles but they're also something that you can have on your local website pages as well so I mean these are kind of things that you can integrate together and the whole point about these things is that you know there is an integrated ecosystem so even on your Google business profiles you've obviously got um, you know uh, a, a call to action a click that you can you know um, click directly on your local website pages as well from your Google business profile. So the whole idea is to interlink all three of these things. Uh, take it away, Ehab. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I want to sort of showcase that customer journey. I'm sure most people here know what that looks like, but just in case, just wanted to really double check. And I'm a bit click happy, so, so I've just clicked on the North Atlantic Ocean for no reason whatsoever. Um, but if I click into here and just let's say I search for a grocery store near me, you can see I'm on that blue dot somewhere in between Manchester and Leeds. Um, I feel like if I click on it, it's going to show me sort of a list of grocery stores um, and also obviously their corresponding uh, map items. I'm just going to choose Audi here, for example. It's not too far from me. I regularly go here um, as one of my local supermarkets. If we're going back to sort of those signals that we we're talking about, yes, there is an element of trust. The Morrisons nearby has even more reviews, for example. But maybe it's not the flavor or the type of supermarket that I want to go to. Um, but I also want to know, okay, maybe I'm trying to get some face cream or something specific, something niche. Is this a big enough branch? So I'll probably go into things like the photos, for example, that sort of thing. Um, I'll try to find, maybe I want to give them a quick ring. Is there a local number? This particular store doesn't have a local number. Why? And more importantly, is it even open? Uh, it says I last visited in February. That's not true. I visited about a week ago. Um, but nonetheless, I'm looking for all of those signals all of the time. Um, and the most important one to help me sort of demystify any any sort of lack of information I have is the local page, as you can see. Um, so here I'm starting to find out a bit more about this place already. Um, yes, we've got opening hours, things like that. We've got the location, things that are already on the Google uh, Google business profile listing. But for example, electric vehicle charging points, didn't know that was a thing, didn't know they had Wi-Fi. Of course, it would be great if all um, all stores have, a, have customer bathrooms, but that isn't the case most of the time, so it's great. These little list of services, fantastic. A little bit more sort of a local uh, knowledge as well about the local Aldi too, which is kind of fantastic too. So these are the kind of things that I'm looking for in the customer journey, in addition to sort of all of these other bits. And um, and something I wanted to sort of cover as well um, before I show you sort of examples of what a locator shouldn't look like is really the importance of why this is so prominent. We've we've spoken about it a little bit earlier in this webinar, but one of, one of the important bits as well is sort of we're moving into an age of the search generative experience where AI is, wants to give richer pieces of information, richer responses, not just yes or no, not just here is a result from Wikipedia or Google or whatever. They wanna give some real um, tangible answers. And with that, it's upon us as business owners, as marketers to be able to provide as much of that information as possible, not just in the Google business profile, but also, um, also in, in in your local pages. So um, so what I did was I tasked one of uh, our product managers, it was actually Cliff on this call, um, with creating a bad locator. Um, but something about uh, our product managers means that they are incapable of making bad locators because even this one is still fairly good. This is a uh, this is a brand called We Love Burgers. It's just a fictitious brand in Los Angeles, and you see these locations. It's responsive. It's fantastic. However, there's there's nothing else about this uh, locator other than sort of the address and it's nice and speedy. Like if I click on this, it's going to give me directions. Great, I'm going to go to Google Maps. But it's a pin only, which means you don't get the benefit of the structured data or the or, or the um, the meta tags or the indexability of individual pages or that requirement I mentioned earlier of the one to one relationship between having a single local page and a Google business profile listing that doesn't exist. So then I asked Cliff, OK, um, can you now create me a locator that also isn't fantastic, but is uh, one that has local pages. So it kind of ticks those boxes. And this is something that I see time and time again with customers. Um, and this is like a really bare bones locator. Someone's 
try to spend some money or spend some time on creating a lo local page and the locators, but uh, they've not really put too much effort. They've not finished it. They've done about 10% of the job. There's no photos here. There's no indicators of really the services other than this is a fast food restaurant. Maybe there's a booking capability. Maybe there's a call to action button that you want to follow so that you can track the ROI. Maybe you want to you want to track some tagging on Google Analytics, that sort of thing. Um, there's nothing on here. There's not, nothing's telling me about also about the reputation of this particular location too. The customer journey isn't always going through the Google business profile. So, so it's worth sort of thinking about that too and ensuring that this customer journey is easy. Now, obviously this is a mock one and you'd have like a navigation panel up here from the home page, uh, but you'd expect to try to get to that, uh, these pages really, really quickly. And on that note, um, I think we can hand over. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so on that, I mean, while you're, um, bringing that up, uh, your screen up, Cliff. Um, Ehab, in, in your role, you've spoken a lot, um, you've spoken to a lot of businesses um, that have pretty bad store locators. So why do you think that so many large companies, even global companies, um, end up having such a poor uh, locator and pages uh, on their website? And especially because it's a you know pretty poor reflection on the brand. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the first mainly being that I think everyone thinks it's really difficult to build a locator, one for, you know, a hundred, a thousand locations. They think it's incredibly challenging when it doesn't have to be. And the other thing as well is finding the right resource to better understand the local SEO impact of creating these local pages. I think a lot of the time it sits with general or technical SEO teams who work on sort of content and some of the incredible, really complex stuff that SEO teams do, but really actually it's a lot simpler than that. Um, and combining the, 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 the low effort and the correct knowledge is sometimes quite difficult. And I guess that's where we Uber will come in. Yeah, great. Thanks for answering that, Ehab. Um, just to the audience uh, as well, uh, just like, I just like to reiterate, uh, you know, a few of you, also walked in late uh, after I said this. So um, please, if you have any questions uh, during this presentation of anything that was just shared to you or of anything that's about to be shared by Cliff, uh, just write it in the in the uh, chat and we will get back to you uh, as soon as uh, we can. We might have already had a comment. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's not a comment for the audience, but uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a, a comment for me. Uh, so that's nice. Um, so <laughs> Cliff, take it away, buddy. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brad and Ehab. And I just want to emphasize the fact that um, the store locator and the local pages that are associated with it are so important, um, you know, for the customer journey, um, but throughout their journey of search. And so, you know, a lot of the data that's on the local pages, um, you know, that gets used in search visibility on the search engines. Um, so, for example, the meta descriptions um, or photos or the different rich data, um, and that can really lend um, to a user um, clicking on a particular link, clicking on a particular location during their search query. And um, yeah, so now I'm showing you a, a good version of, the, of that fictitious business. We love burgers. I think I was just hungry that day um, when I was, <laughs> when you have asked me to create a locator. Um, so this one is going to be, um, in comparison to the, the two that you have showed you, much more optimized, much more rich in data, um, and really showing you the local offering at each individual location. And this is something more along the lines of um, what we would like you to, you know, what we'd like our customers to build out, which they can, um, you know, simply do with, with some of the tools that we have. And Ehab will show you that uh, in a few minutes. And so uh, uh, now I'm here on the, the store locator page. I'm just going to walk you through um, the different elements that are, that are important. Uh, you'll see that it's, it's, you know, it, in comparison to the version that Ehab showed you that was really just monochrome, um, you know, here you have the colors of um, matching the brand identity. Um, on the map here, it's all interactive. And so as I zoom in and out, you see the different um, groupings, what we call map clusters. So here are four locations over here on the right, and then four on the left and one down below. And as you zoom in and out, um, those groupings, those clusters are, 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 are dynamic. Um, the pins are branded for the locations. So um in this case the little burger icon that's their logo if they existed <laughs> um that would be their logo 
um, clicking on the pin gives you a little like quick snapshot of the location and maybe that you know helps the customer right away decide that that's the location they want to go to or order from or book a table and so they can do that right away um, on the left over here there's filters and so this gives you gives you the ability to drill down and really choose a location that suits your needs so maybe i'm looking for something that's drive through or maybe i'm looking for a location that's takeout and not all of them offer it so this would give you um give you that ability and obviously these are these are tailored um so these can match your business needs and um you know whether that's uh you know whether you're a bank and you have some locations that are atm versus some that have a drive-through atm which is common here near where i live um you can set all of those filters appropriately to really match your business um, you can also search for locations here. So in the, this case, I'm going to search for this postal code and get the one location that matches that need, um, you know, that search. We would present all the locations if there were more that match that um, postal code or that search query. And right here from the search results, I can uh, take action. And so either, either order now, book a table, um, or a newer feature that we have, which is saving a favorite location. And so I typically do this as I'm shopping and I'm navigating the internet. Um, you can choose this location as my favorite, as my preferred store, restaurant, or bank, or, or whatever it might be. So that every time I come back to the store locator, that location is saved for me at the top. And so I can get quick information about it, take quick actions about it, see if it's open or not at those hours. Um, and so that's one, um, newer piece. Hey, Cliff. Yes. Just quickly, uh, just while we're still on the locator topic, um, we have a question here. Uh, yeah, Cliff and Ehab, you can both answer this one. Is there a significant uh, disadvantage of having the locator map embedded on a location uh, page versus having a view on map CTA on the location page? Ehab, what are your thoughts? I'm just reading through it again. <laughs> So it doesn't necessarily have to be a movable map. Uh, I know that sometimes when you're looking for to reinstate or to get verified that Google asks for clear, clear signals of exactly where the location is. Um, sometimes that is just an address. However, if you're in a part of the world where Google struggles with addressing systems, I'm talking India, I'm talking the Gulf um, in, in the Middle East, for example, where there isn't uh, so much of a similar addressing system like there is in Western Europe or in North America, then a map will be super, super useful. Question is though, there is also a balance on page load times. Page load times are a massive factor for uh, SEO, for, um, for scoring in terms of performance. If you're throwing a map on there, just for a little bit of clarity and Google already know your location and you've been verified and all that stuff, is there a need for that? Is it going to help your customers? Is there another way to demonstrate where the location is? Is it taking up some important space as well on the page? These are questions that I would ask really. Um, and as you can tell, it's really case by case. So I can't necessarily give a specific answer, but I think those questions will equip you um, with, with the right sort of tool set to know what to do. How about, how about you, Cliff? What do you think on that? Yeah, I agree with, uh, I agree with that as well. Cool. Excellent. I hope that answers the question. Whoever asked that, if if you want to continue that as well, we can take that offline too. Perfect. Hey, Thanks so much. Please continue, buddy. Yeah, of course. Uh, and so now I've hopped into a local page. I've gone into one of the uh, the local landing pages. Um, as you can see here, there's photos of the actual location, uh, or it isn't an actual location, but photos of the location, and that gives the consumer, uh, you know, sets the expectation. You know, is this something that I'm looking for? Would I enjoy? eating here is this the you know giving them the proper foresight okay as i pull up to this location this is what it looks like um the hours of operation and you'd be surprised how many you know local pages we come across that don't have the hours of operation a localized description and so uh, an individual uh, description for each location so in this case um, this one is located at the grove in los angeles and it's their flagship original location so um yeah, adding some local content to those descriptions rather than just a, a boilerplate is, um, you know, something that we definitely recommend. I've added just some rich media here, so a YouTube video, just to uh, showcase how you can add um, different third-party widgets, different types of media, um, really any HTML that you want to add to the page, you can customize it your way. 
Um, because it's a restaurant, uh, we've got the menu here. This may be products. Uh, if you're a retail store, this might be services if you're service-based. Um, but yeah, showing the local availability at this location um, with this menu. And then down here below, um, some additional just custom content that we've added here. And this is just um, you know text that I've added for encouraging people to join their loyalty program. Up here on the top right, um, we've added another third party widget um, to make a reservation and find a table for this location. Um, again, this could be a form, this could be a book an appointment um, a widget that you have. Really, uh, you can use this to, to match your KPIs and match your business needs, but it's just open, um, you know, an open content block that you can add whenever you want to it. Um, this is another section that I find really important uh, that really sets the tone and, and gives the consumer information about um, what's offered at that location. So in this case, um, you know, they have dine-in, but they don't have drive through So maybe I'm looking for a drive through location, so this one wouldn't suit my needs, but it's good that it's here um, so that I don't show up at this location expecting drive through and I can go and find another location. Maybe I can use the filters and, and find a location that's drive through only. This is a similar experience to what you would have on, on different map providers. I've added another um, um, custom content block here. This is just a, a, a TikTok widget that I've added here with some rich media of Gordon Ramsay making a burger, but really it's to show you that you can add, um, again, uh, you know, third-party widgets, custom content as you like it. And then the payment methods, uh, categories, and some keywords. And down here below, uh, we show similar locations that are fits, you know, just interactive. And so maybe this location doesn't suit my needs, but this other one on Beverly Boulevard does, and I can order right from here. I can book a table or, um, you know, click through and go to that local page. And just scrolling back up to the top, um, you know, one of the main things um, that Brad and Ehab were talking about, um, you know, were those intent-based actions and those click-throughs. And so aligning with your business needs and your KPIs, and what you're really trying to, you know, achieve. Uh, in this case, you know, the digital ordering and the book a table, but um, maybe you're uh, again a bank looking to to book appointments, um, or uh, you know, set up, uh, you know, personal shopping if you're a retailer, or showing offers because that's you know your main thing is getting people to those um, offer pages. You can set up these CTAs as you like, and we see really uh, incredible click through rates on these um, as a customers gotten to a local page and followed through that journey, um, you know, these intent-based actions are really high. Um, I'll show you here just another example. This is a customer of ours um, that has added some local content, the offers that they have currently going on, a virtual try-on um, button, and um, those Google reviews for that location. And um, just to kind of give you, kind of reiterate the, the things that I was mentioning, the things that are important when considering building out a local page, um, really giving that local content. So the photos being localized, the descriptions, um, also the SEO settings, you know, the title tags and meta descriptions, um, adding the, the relevant information for that location, like the attributes, um, like the menu or the offerings there. Uh, aligning, you know, directly with your KPIs to help the customer um, get closer to the purchase and take those intent-based actions are, are really important. And another one that's related to the store locator, um, but that lives on your website is, you know, placing the, the store locator um, call to action in your header and in a really clean, easy to find space that doesn't necessarily use obscure language. It's really easy identifiable. For the customer, find a restaurant, find a store, you know, branch locator if you're a bank, um, something along those lines. And so now I am going to uh, stop sharing. I'm going to um, send you back over to Ehab, who is going to show you, um, you know, really how easy and how simple it is to build one of these store locators and maintain them um, directly from our platform. Yeah, just on that. Um, and I mean, we can actually go back into this later as well. I actually want to provide everyone sort of at the end after this some, some best practices, I guess, um, from both of you. But just Cliff, a question of just everything you've mentioned, uh, you know, in your presentation. Um, what do you think is the most important, um, and I guess 
the thing that has the biggest impact and whether it's still locator and also you know um a website's local pages drives more search and ultimately conversions you know the title of the the, the presentation today of course yeah i think <laughs> setting up that local relevant content on the pages in the description in the meta descriptions in the title tags and then also you know elements like the photos and stuff like that are are super important and then aligning those call to actions with what your business really needs and what those kpis that you have for that you know the whole business uh, is trying to align for is um are two of the things that that, that pop into my mind uh, mm -hmm. right away and why and why do you think that is you know the localized content um you know you're you're tr you're you're trying to get people into the store into the location and so really um showing them what's available at that individual location and rather just not one size fits all because they're not necessarily one size fits all um, mm -hmm. and as well um, you know, offering the search engines, all of that individualized, localized content is super important. Um, and then why the intent based as the customers, you know, gone through their search and their discovery landing on these local pages really shows high intent that, um, you know, they want to make a purchase or, um, you know, use your business. And so having that easy for them to, to click through and then take that, you know, next step towards purchase or the last step towards purchase, uh, is really important. Fabulous. Thanks, mate. Um, so, Ehab, um, let's get into showing. We had a question about this as well in terms of um, showing uh, the editor. So, um, Ehab, do you want to take this away and show um, basically our locator and pages builder? Sure thing. Yeah, thanks. And actually, before I start, um, we have an incredibly active um, uh, viewer today and i want to thank you so much for asking so many questions and i encourage everyone else to do so um one of the questions they asked was actually they showed the link to one of our customers and basically that customer had uh, no local pages they just had a locator and i wanted to address that because that's you know something that comes as a request from a lot of our customers sometimes when for example they're a b2b business or they're a stockist and they want to show a stockist locator so they don't want to compete with the with you know the retailers um, that they supply their stock to uh, think of like a coca-cola or a schwarzkopf or sort of a supplier basically um, and so because they don't want to compete with them they turn off indexing on those pages one of the questions was about why does it appear on google for example and the other was about really just about what about this page? Why is it pin only, similar to what I just showed you as a bad locator? Um, sometimes it's just about the CX. It's not necessarily about the SEO element. And for a business like that particular customer that you you showed, um, that's that's exactly why they have it. It's mainly for the CX. So when someone goes on their page, they can see exactly where those other locations are. Um, and actually, it's also a great example because I think it's a list of doctors or something like that. It's a portal for like some sort of healthcare. And Cliff earlier was showing, uh, you know, booking capabilities, a fantastic example of booking and adding some custom booking uh, um, widgets inside your local pages is, for example, with doctors, you want to book an appointment, you want to make sure they're available, whether it's private or public healthcare, it's super, super useful to be able to have something like that. So I just want to address those use cases because I think they would uh, mm. they'd be quite useful for everyone else here. Yeah, yeah, just quickly as well. I mean, I know that we, uh, in terms of the, um, you know, people uh, on the webinar today, there, there's a whole range of people, right? You might have a store locator you, uh, that, that's you know, already something that's um, you know, very good, or you might have one that's already something that we've showed that might be along the lines of, ah, oh, you know, I understand it's a bit poor, or you might not have one, right? And so um, based on you know, all of the different um, you know, people that are currently here, it's been uh, important for us to showcase you know, all of the different types of kind of you know, uh, the range of good and bad locator. And so we're going into this um, conversation about the locator and pages, bu uh, pages builder to actually talk about how kind of um, how you, know, you can set one up um, you know, yeah. uh, essentially within the Uberall platform and actually how it's not, a, not as difficult as you think it is uh, in terms of a project. So yeah, um, just wanted to point that out, Ehab. Exactly, yeah, thank you for that. And you know, if anyone wants to have a conversation with us about bespoking their locator, we've got so many bespoke options, stuff that we're not even gonna be able to show today. Um, but yeah, so for example, you know, I wanted to show sort of the Uber or Live locator, uh, the one that's currently on our website. Um, first and foremost, I'll just show you how easy and quick it is to actually create one. 
it is so so quick to create one um if i just click uh if i just click here i just want to confirm people can still see me is that right i had a bit of a flash on my screen see you, but you can't see the screen anymore um yeah Excuse maybe me. until we get that back we can we can answer a couple of questions um i just had one uh you know question uh from the audience and i think it would be uh, again on ehab your kind of best practices for the audience as well because as i said before i mean we want to show ah oh, well since it's back up we'll just go straight back into that actually so yeah keep going on, ehab thank you very much we can we can address more questions at the very end as well please do keep uh, having them come in with they're absolutely flooding in so thank you so much um so to create one i just hit new locator um i could choose the name so i'm just going to do test for now uh, i could choose the exact accounts that i've got in it i'm going to choose the overall locations i can choose the language that i've got you can see it's an absolute plethora of languages that we support for our locator solutions more so than even our platform which is actually really really cool um that's thanks to cliff and his team for sure um and then once i'm done let's say i choose english I'll just keep it to English for now. Hit create. And once it's created, that's pretty much it. Um, you then are asked to sort of enter and start editing it. I'm actually not even going to edit it now. I'm going to go back and I want to show you what that looks like. So the one I created is here. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can sort of put that on your website, basically. Um, you just go to here, click snippet, and you just take this code that it's as simple as that, copy to clipboard, and you put that on your website, and that is a combination of the locator and all of the local pages. Let's say you add a thousand locations, you remove 20 locations one, one month, you don't have to worry about your website anymore. As long as it's being done in Uber, all, like you probably are covering through sort of your location efforts on Google Business Profile and your reviews, management strategies, all through Uber all anyway, you can do that through Uber or two, and you don't have to think any more about it. You want to redesign, you want to change what it looks like, no problem. You want to duplicate it, nice and easy as well. You want to change the language, it's right in there too. If I go into the actual product itself, you'll be able to also see uh, the Uber locator, for example. Right now, this is what it looks like uh, on the website. Um, you can see that the maps looks slightly different from the map that you saw earlier. You can see that the color scheme is Uberall's beautiful ultraviolet colors. I'm currently wearing one of the old hoodies. We're all wearing one of the older hoodies, uh, keeping it retro, but the newer ones are all ultraviolet and they'll blind you in the eyes at any conference. Um, but you can also see uh, some rich information such as the thumbnails, certain bits of info as well. Um, let's say I wanted to uh, display the star rating on every location, like the local London office that there is to me. Let's say I wanted to add directions of phone calls. It's as quick as that. I hit save. It's on the website already. Um, if I hit save, I'm not going to do so in this case. Um, let's say I wanted to change the look of the map. I just go to that and go to this. I choose aubergine. Not really loving aubergine, for example. We spoke about retro earlier. Here we go. Uh, and I can create custom ones, for example. Um, the, the pins themselves, these pins, um, I'm, I've chosen a location pin. Uh, like a, uh, a logo, but I can change it to just a color if I wanted and I'm pretty much good to go. The same with those cluster icons as well, these ones, if I hover over it, it becomes ultraviolet, but actually on its own, it's black and you can see that here. Um, likewise with the design, you've seen that already, what that looks like here, what the links look like if I were to open up this location. I might go back and actually open up the London location because I actually really, really like what's been done with this. We've not chosen every piece of every piece on here. We can start adding a few more bits and pieces, but we kind of wanted to show you sort of a halfway house, an in progress one, if you like, where you've got those color schemes, you've got some little features as well here. You can add things later on, I'll show you in a sec. Um, but here, for example, I'm looking at the images of, you know, we're inside a WeWork, so these are actually WeWork images. Here's our old logo, we need to change that really, really quickly. That doesn't, that doesn't take too long, just go to the location, I'm pretty much good to go, which is really, really nice and easy. Um, and then I can just hit X, close it, and we're good to go. I could change so many other bits and pieces. So many of our customers have started to recently utilize the custom CSS section, uh, such as getting rid of all of this gray in the background. It's something that we're probably gonna be adding to the product at some time soon anyway, but the fact that it's already there in custom CSS where you can just do a little bit of code crunching and just remove it, good to go. Um, we absolutely transformed an example locator internally for one of our customers um, within about 20 minutes uh, to give you a, an, an idea. 
If we're talking about pages, let's say, you know, there's a description here. Let's say I wanted to move the description up. It refreshes quickly. Description's gone to the top. Photos, everything's all there. And, excuse me, fantastic. If I wanted to add the minimum star ratings, I can add them straight away and it will add the average star rating as well and a few other bits and bobs too. There's so many different little pieces here. The, the header type is a map, but I can choose a hero image instead of the map. We were talking about that earlier. One of the questions came in. That's exactly what it was. So it's super, super useful. Um, and then I'll just finalize, finalize some pieces. I see some questions coming in as well. Um, before I go to general, actually, I want to show sort of the SEO element um, referring to what I was addressing earlier, the not indexing pages. Um, Cliff earlier mentioned sort of the meta descriptions that you wanted to add for the locator, so this map page, but let's say you wanted this entirely different structure of meta description and the title tags for the local pages, which is this stuff, you can change that straight away. Super, super simple. Now, all of our locators come default with local business schema type, which is fantastic for you know what I was talking about earlier with like verifications, all of that kind of stuff. But actually you can narrow it down even more to any of the other options that you have here too, automotive business, that sort of thing. So many different subtypes of the local business schema, movie theater, like there's so, so many, surely there's one there for you. If not, there's always local business, which works fantastically as well. Um, so super, super useful. Uh, but yeah, then going back to sort of the general, there's a couple of other bits and bobs in here as well. For example, if I wanted the pin only locator, like like um, one, of the, uh, one, one of our viewers, um, pointed out earlier this is where you choose that I can just choose these locations to have pin only I can I now no longer can go into those pages so that's how easy it is to co configure all of that stuff now I'm showing you all of this it's so so simple to then basically just hit the save button and reflect all of that on the uber website and then of course you can preview it as well you can preview it in mobile you can preview it um, in, in in desktop as well all that stuff but Everything I just showed you, really, I just customized the locator or showed you where I can customize the locator within, what, five minutes? Um, if you want to build something like this on your own, we've estimated in terms of the number of sprints that the developer would take to create one on similar par with the findability for Google, such as schema markup, et cetera, the scalability, the ease with the builder, everything. It would take 18 months to a couple of years. If you're talking about creating something that's quite subpar, it, you can probably create it fairly quickly. You're not necessarily achieving the goals that you want. Um, and even then, I very much doubt that you can do that within 20 minutes, building one from a scratch. Um, even researching to go and find a bare bones basic widget takes longer than that. And then installing that because the basic widgets usually aren't as easy to install. This is already available, especially if you're an Uber or customer, it's, it's there for you nice and easy. I'm gonna discard the changes before the rest of the marketing uh, team uh, kill me for changing all the colors on Uber. But you can see how simple that is um, to, to change. Um, I've not looked at the question yet, but I don't know if anyone else has any questions while I sift through some. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna take over here as well. So the, you know, if anyone's got, obviously if you've got questions, please put them in the, the, the chat again. Uh, this is the time for, you know, as I said before, if you're, you know, we wanted to show you through, um, you know, the the the, the Uberall option. Uh, you're all Uberall customers, obviously. So, um, but if you are happy with your current locator solution, then absolutely, we're totally fine with that. And so, you know, if you've got any questions around how to how to, you know, improve it, um, if you're having some pains around the, the one you currently have, then we're obviously happy to answer questions around that as well. Um, yeah, and so um, let's kind of get stuck in uh, to our first question. And our first question um, is around um, best practices, actually. So I know we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier, but I mean, uh, Ehab, you hadn't really got had the, uh, the the kind of the, the the ability here to actually talk through this and i'd sort of like to get your view on um what are the best practices in terms of like building out that you know store locator and local pages that um really ends up um not only optimized for search and um engagements but obviously in terms of when the customer is actually on those pages, you know, making sure that you're actually giving them somewhere to go, right? So what's what's some of the best practices to attract and convert those customers? Sure, so if we're achieving the first couple of goals you mentioned, 
first and foremost is structured data scheme markup ensuring that it's not only there but it's there's no errors it's consistent with the google business profile also actually i've seen some customers or some customers prior to them switching to uber all where they've had a structured data and their address and phone number is different from actually what a customer sees on the local page which i thought was absolutely crazy i've never seen that before those are the kind of things keeping them consistent and relevant and active is so so important um, and then on top of that as well if we're talking about the, the cx as well the customer experience we're talking about the photos that i just showed you if you can embed a video without it being too taxing on your performance then the, your on-paid performance then that would be great of course i've mentioned performance as well that's something that cliff and i talk about all the time we uh, cliff's team put so much effort into speeding up our locators all the time things that you won't see as an update in your newsletter but we're constantly working on optimizing performance that's the kind of thing that will differentiate you between your competitors if you're sitting there thinking about the cx about the seo uh, about the overall experience what if your ceo goes on the website and it's loading it's taking ages to load or it's bare bones that could be quite embarrassing so all of this can be addressed. I don't know, Cliff, if you can add any more to that. That's service a pay. tough one to follow up. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe sort of like services, attributes, that sort of thing. And then we've got- yeah, like that local, yeah, I mean, that local content and, and local availability and really, really setting the customer up for success so that really the location that they choose meets their expectation um it is super important so yeah the attributes is one of those uh yeah like i showed you below on the on the we love burgers you know what's available at each individual location similar when you're on your phone and you're searching a map provider uh or when you're in your car searching map provider uh and looking for a location um you know and getting that that information right there uh, it's super important yeah, I got one for you, Cliff. Um, when editing the store locator or local page, uh, do you need to change anything uh, on your website? Ah, good question. So like Ehab showed you at the beginning um, when he was showing you the the, the builder, um, when you copy that snippet. So you implement that that little piece of code in your website one time, and that's that's the only time you need to do it. Subsequently, as you go back and make changes, um, and as we release new features and you go into the builder and add them um, and, and save and publish that, that automatically in real time reflects on the local page. So let's say you want to, I don't know, remove a section or we've just launched the uh, save a favorite store feature um, that you know wasn't there yesterday. And so today it's there, it's available in the builder tool. All you need to do is add it, press save. And that's it. You don't need to go and, and recopy the snippet code. It'll be the same snippet code that you copied six months ago or last year or whenever it was. But no, you don't have to go back. It's uh, it's all done um, by us. All right. Thanks, mate. Um, so last question. You've got uh, a minute to answer this if you can, Ehab. Uh, so um, if our business is on the Be Chosen package, that's an Uber all package, obviously, um, do we have access to the locator creation tool or is that a different subscription level fantastic question so usually it is a different subscription level um but uh as brad mentioned earlier if you wanted to take it for a test drive that is something that we have made available so you can just give it a try and see what it's like to build for example uh, with the be chosen package it isn't usually part of that um, but of course, again, speak to your contacts, your point of contact at Uber all, and we can see what we can do to show you a test drive and then we can have a further conversation about that too. Okay, another question I lied uh, very quickly. Does uh, including the snippet have any task uh, basically concerning um, DSGVO, so uh, meaning GDPR? Not that I can think of because it's all public data. It's all public locations. Um, the only time I'd be really concerned if there's personal identifiable information. Um, but if we're talking about sort of cookies, et cetera, um, and ensuring that you can accept them before loading the locator, then yeah, in terms of consent, then then that's where, you know, 
we didn't show it because obviously our cookie is already accepted but if you accept or deny it it will follow a different workflow if you deny it will show just the list of locations it won't show the particular locator um it, it will show a very rich list of question uh, locations you can click on the locations and show you local pages if you accept then it will show you those and that's usually because you know the relationship that we have with google for example they need to be able to see that information take that from us and then feed us back that information about for example if you say locate me that kind of thing um, I hope that answers your question, but we get that all the time and it's very difficult to put it in 30 seconds. So I'm, I'm more than happy to have a, a, a longer conversation later down the line about it too. Um, right. So feel free to hit us up. Lying again, this is the last question. Again, quick answer, quick fire round. Any advice on meta title of a location page? Should it be a full address or contain city, area name and company name? Yeah, it should definitely contain the company name and uh, you know maybe the area or the city. Uh, in terms of the full address, um, no, it's about 60 or 70 characters. Don't quote me. It's between the two um, of how long it should be. And so the address is going to be, you know, just way too long for that. Yeah, yeah, it should be readable. It should be clear. It should be unique. But, you know, full addresses are unique, but sometimes they're not. And sometimes they're a bit too convoluted and unreadable. So just have that in mind. Great. Okay. So last two minutes, here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, first of all, we have a survey right at the end of this. Uh, so love it if you could fill it out. It's like only like three questions, uh, three or four questions. So, um, you know, uh, please uh, help us help make these uh, much better, uh, as, as, as great as possible for your experience. Um, also, um, you know, what uh, Ehab showed you, that actually is going to be available uh, for you all to test drive. Um, coming up very soon. So we're actually going to let you know when that's available um, within the product for you to actually engage with. So you can actually test drive our locator builder for yourself and see how easy it is to actually set up one um, for yourself there too. Um, yeah, and like I said, we'll reach out for that. Um, or you can also obviously, um, uh, not or sorry, um, an account manager uh, will be uh, just reaching out to you after this webinar with the actual recording, but obviously also with an opportunity for you to find out a little bit more about um, taking us, uh, our locator for a test drive. Uh, and that's pretty much it from us. Uh, guys, you wanna say goodbye to the audience? Toodles. <laughs> thanks I a lot, would, everyone. It's been great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Uh, we will see you soon. Any questions? Let, uh, oh, yeah. Last thing I'll say is that we will answer any questions that we haven't answered. Uh, we'll email you on those ones. And if you have any questions or anything like that, um, yeah, we'll provide you an opportunity to, to get those uh, to us. So, yeah, uh, thanks for joining. Much appreciated. And we will uh, see you all later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.